Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse. Let's start from verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully stand against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. 12. For we are not wrestling. Let's go to 13 for sake of time. Therefore, put on God's complete armor, that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger and having done all that the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place are you ready let's see what amplify says stand therefore on your ground having tightened the belt of truth around your loins so it starts with truth and then number two it says uh, okay well it says and haven't put on the breastplate of integrity and moral rectitude and right standing with god this is him teaching now what that righteousness means are we together next verse let's read very quickly and having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with a firm-footed stability and promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace 16 lift up over all the covering the shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one 17 it says and take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the spirit wields which is the word of god 18 it says pray at all times on every occasion in every season in the spirit now let me list for you what the full armor of god really means i've searched this in at least 12 or 13 translations and also on a few lexicons number one is truth integrity and moral courage is what the bible refers to as truth number two what he calls the breastplate of righteousness is actually an upright heart an upright heart is what he calls the breastplate of righteousness number three preparation of the gospel of peace is the third weapon do you know what this means he's saying carry with you an awareness that whilst you are ready to preach the gospel there is an immunity that follows you daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 very quickly to buttress on that point daniel 12 and verse 3 the bible says and they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forevermore the star is far in the heavens it is not threatened by anything that happens on earth and he says when you are your feet is shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace derive an understanding that because your heart is stayed on the gospel there is an immunity that you enjoy are we together number four the shield of faith faith like a shield a system of defense number five he calls it the helmet of salvation do you know what this means notice that a helmet protects your head and if you go to an engineering site or you go to battle it seems to me like among the many things you cover they watch your head very carefully and he says what covers your head is the helmet of salvation that means there is an understanding of salvation especially your oneness with christ and your positional advantage these dual revelations that come on account of salvation must protect you the helmet of salvation you draw your strength like Ephesians 6 10 amplified says from your union with him the awareness that I am one with Christ the awareness that I've been exalted your oneness with Christ and your positional advantage as a result of salvation 
it can cover your head and give you victory and then the sword of the spirit which clearly is the word of god and finally consistent prayer now let me tell you this this is very powerful because when you truly engage these seven arsenals the bible calls it the whole armor of god do you know what this means this is these are the forces that work in synergy to maintain your victory now notice that the whole armor of god does not necessarily establish and manifest your victory but it maintains it the assignment of the whole armor is maintenance because you use it to stand that means you stand maintaining what has been manifest i will be teaching you the, the forces that establish and manifest the assignment of the whole armor is that when these forces have worked for you and the victory has now come you engage them as maintenance systems the whole armor of god i wrote here are largely preventive strategies that help the believer maintain his or her victory they are preventive strategies They help you maintain your victory in Christ. An upright heart, the shield of faith, the consciousness of your salvation, the awareness of the immunity that follows you as you preach the gospel. All of these things are maintenance, spiritual maintenance strategies. That means for one who has obtained victory in experience, you engage these things to maintain your victory. Having an upright heart alone an upright heart you know what an upright heart is a heart without guile that alone is a powerful maintenance system because when you pile things like bitterness envy anger the devil will march like a warrior and enter your life these are maintenance systems but let's deal with the weapons that establish and manifest the victory as we wrap up Hallelujah, you have won the victory. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the reason king Seated in majesty You are the reason king Hallelujah That will be your song You have won my victory Listen, listen, I still remember it today, even though it's many years ago, the day I found this, it was in the night, I remember, I ran, I ran to my room, God is my witness. I stood in front of my room and I said Satan with this that I know I will not even drive you you are welcome from that day light is powerful John 1 5 says the light shineth brothers and sisters I want to hand you by the spirit weapons tonight that fortify you you will stand and dare the gates of darkness with audacity that is unrepentant away with that threat that after exalting jesus something will boomerang back no not when you have this can i tell you when people try to fight terrorists sometimes they hide and they mask themselves so that the terrorists don't see them and attack them but when soldiers and the police fight when they are parading terrorists they don't cover their face because they have the system to reproduce it again 
you never see them parading even if they are the capon they will tell you these are the guys terrorizing and the person saying it has children and he does not cover himself because he's surrounded by an intelligence system that immunes him you will never see the president of america wearing helmets but you try to touch him you don't see him cover himself with anything he can even be flying t-shirts and taking coffee you just try to kill him then you will know why it's called a superpower Please sit down. I want you to be sensitive. We're wrapping up. I thank the Lord for his presence. I thank the Lord. Ah. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me Thank you for your patience. Where would I be? Number one, the word of God. Write it down. There are three weapons that eternally establish and manifest the victory over Satan. I don't care what cause. I don't care what charm. These are the weapons. Number one is the word of God. Hebrews chapter one and verse three. Please let's run. Hebrews 1 3 who being the brightness of his glory he says the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power another version says he upholds all things by his powerful word that means the word of God literally upholds all things Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 we'll run through these scriptures my apologies to be rushing so that we'll finish everything and yet do justice to all that we need to do tonight. Where the word of a king is, except that person is not a king. The word of a slave may have doubts, but where the word of a king is, it says there is power. But the second part is what I like. Who may say unto him, what are you doing? That when a king speaks, who stands to say, I'm not sure who can stand against the lord no one can no one will who can stand who can stand against our king no one can no one can no one will oh Victory belongs to him. Oh, victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Where the word of a king is. So every time you hear the word, verify who spoke. Where the word of a king is, there is. Isaiah 55 verse 11 please sit down Isaiah 55 verse 11 we're examining the power of the word so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it says it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it Psalms 107 and verse 20 please write psalms 107 verse 20 the bible never said he gave his word he sent it when you send a messenger as a seed as a king it does not disobey he sent his word and that word will remain and keep hovering around until it heals until it delivers from destruction 
then it goes back like a faithful messenger i have finished he sent forth his word mark 16 20 mark 16 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming the word write this the word of god activates the power of god the power of god is like is like a nuclear a nuclear missile but the word of god is that code that activates it as powerful as the power of god is it remains barren until the word of god comes listen to me very carefully in first john chapter 2 first john 2 please hurry up media first john 2 from verse 12 first john 2 and then verse 12 i write these things to you little children he said because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake 13 i write these things to you fathers because ye have known him from the beginning i write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one i write to you little children because ye have known the father 14 he says i have written to you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning and then i have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of god abideth in you this is the source of your strength young men you are strong but your strong your strength is derived from the word of god the word of god contains the will of god do not forget the word of god contains the will of god and then i have taught you that the word of god defines the boundary of god's commitment to the believer that when god relates with the believer the jurisdiction of that relationship is the word of god one last scripture first john chapter 5 and verse 14 this is the confidence that i have in you whenever i call you you will answer me this is the confidence that i have in you whenever i call you you will answer me listen and this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his word which is a capture of his will the bible says he heareth us 15 and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him that means when you approach the things of the spirit and that includes the matters of warfare and demons your confidence is based on the fact that the basis of your relating with this all-powerful god is his word and he has bound by covenant that provided it is a provision that his word allows he will not say no to the word of god weapon number two the name of Jesus. Weapon number two. The name of Jesus. Hmm. Mark 16, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Whatever the signs are, they will only happen in my name. There are numerous signs, but all those signs together only happen in my name. The name of a man is a representation of his office. It's not just a means of identification. When you call people by names, number one, it identifies them, but number two, it describes the extent of their specialty. When you say doctor, this person why do you need to mention that because in that we already know that this man has studied and he has gone that far 
are we together yes when you say somebody is ambassador this his excellency honorable senator why do we add those things those are attempts to describe competence those are attempts to describe the vastness of ability in my name means as touching my office there are times that when people write certain things they are not really interested in what was written they want to see the letter headed paper what name is that letter you, somebody can write something and just give you a letter headed paper and not even write the he may not even spell correctly please attend to him signed the letter headed paper on that table becomes a guarantee for your favor because of the office that brought you can i tell you this listen carefully when jesus died and resurrected and was exalted the bible says an office was given to him we call it a name and that that office was so constructed that nothing the same way joseph was exalted and pharaoh said i am pharaoh and in nothing will it be hindered he would only be second based on the ranking of the palace but in terms of administration pharaoh said don't ask me anything that has to do with the administration of egypt come to pharaoh to joseph so jesus has been exalted in john 14 and verse 13 to 14 why am i teaching you this because that is the name that will bring you a very permanent victory tonight john 14 13 and 14 and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name take note in my name there does not just mean chanting the alphabet j-e-s-u-s -E uh -uh. with the consciousness of my office that i will do that the father may be glorified in the son verse 14 if ye shall ask anything in my name I shall do it hallelujah with the little grace and honor that God has given some of us we've had the privilege of using the honor of this office even to open doors for others there are people that have just written some things on paper please sir help this person with my signature and as limited as we are as human beings, you will be amazed at the doors that that signature opens. The person carrying it may not deserve it, but he's not going on his own. There is an office. Are we together? If the president minutes on you and says, look for a job for him, with all this unemployment noise, look for a job. The person who, looks, who does not look for that job will most likely be the one to leave that job for you. So the person knows there is pressure on the person executing it even if it means creating another committee to put you there so he gave us his name you know what that means he gave us his office and said function he said listen let me warn you satan will not respect you because of you make sure that every time you function walk within the consciousness of this office this office most believers call j-e-s-u-s -E and yet they are not walking in the name to walk in the name does not mean to recite it we call j-e-s-u-s -E so that the nations will know that the one we are talking about who is lord and christ is jesus the son of the living god but the name is not jesus the name is his lordship you see i have seen the power of names our worship team people will sing it all the time there are thrones there are names there are all kinds of things it is true seated in this place koinonia is a collection of extremely successful people by the grace of god and by the privilege of leadership i know some of the people seated here and outside and around connected to this ministry i know the kind of power that their offices provide there are people when they like you you will never go to the embassy again to stand for visa human beings it doesn't matter whether the embassy is locked you will still enter without entering names now listen carefully 
there are people when they love you their names become a receipt you will pay for anything anywhere credited to the name there are times that admission will be over but certain names will extend the date there are hospitals when you go to you can go in a name and you will not pay one naira the name paid for it listen when he says in my name that means you must have the consciousness of how far and how exalted this name is the name of a governor will not solve national issues because he's a governor the jurisdiction his name as governor already created the boundary of his power are we together he cannot another governor cannot go to another state and impose things but the president as the commander-in-chief within that 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 region a monarch can stand and make decisions on behalf of his territory there can be a land dispute and they take it to the monarch and he can look at it and say you know what i decide i decide look at judges magistrate judges they literally can choose whether a human being should live or die can you imagine that somebody can come it does not matter except god helps him by mercy but naturally speaking a judge can actually sit down and in five minutes reduce somebody's lifetime to one more day names you can sit in a position and give a verdict and say for the rest of your life you will spend it in prison and hit that thing and that's the end of it any other discussion you discuss in prison when jesus gave us his name find out what the name did before he died find out what you see the name he gave us is not the one that was used when he was walking on earth is the name that was given after the coronation was over and he gave us that office listen carefully if say for instance i have a wristwatch here and let's assume this wristwatch is say a security wristwatch that whoever wears this wristwatch will be treated like joshua selman are we together now if i remove this wristwatch and i give someone when the person wears that wristwatch there are security doors is that true come on technology all you need to do is use your palms or use something like this so i have this watch connected and it opens the security door and someone else wears it even if it's a baby and the baby plays around the door the door does not know the difference between the baby and the owner whoever is the wearer of that security mechanism the door was designed to open for him so when jesus walked upon the earth he used his name he sent the disciples that means listen carefully when you stand in the name of Jesus, exactly what would have happened if Jesus were there is what should happen now that you are there in his name. Someone may have a parcel for me and say, Joshua Selman, I have this for you. And I can say, sorry, I may not be able to come, but I'm going to send someone. If I send that one, the person will collect the parcel. Is that true? There are politicians who send people to represent them and when you are quoting them you will say the governor said this even though the governor was not there if the person makes a mistake of donating something that he did not discuss with the governor as far as the state is concerned they will say governor you donated 50 million where's our money he will have to pay and go and flog it out with whoever misrepresented him but as far as the state is concerned governor you, if you are a man of integrity you must bring that money so when you stand and look at demons by age they are older than you by experience from a human standpoint they have it more than you but you call on a name i told you that god sits on an altar that that covenant of his name is not an emotional thing it has nothing to do whether your voice is sounding nice or not it has nothing to do whether you are wearing jean trouser or you are wearing suit once you invoke that office the power behind that office is released immediately the name of jesus someone shout the name of jesus yes. 
I know what the name of Jesus is able to do. That office. Ephesians 1.21 tells us he has been exalted. Ephesians 1.21 Far above principality. These are offices too. Far above powers, offices. Far above might and dominion and every other office. Not only in this world, but in the world that is to come. You can arrange thrones. You can arrange names. But none will come and stand before the name of Jesus. Can I tell you this? When you stand and rebuke demon spirits just because you are a Christian, you will be surprised. How they will look at you and not even respond to you. But you come by the name. Blessed is he who comes in the name. This is the reason why we stand with authority and say in the name of Jesus, Satan, demons, yokes, we command you, go. And we expect compliance because the power that backs us, my name does not carry much power as a human being. There are many other people carrying my name, but there's no other person who sits in that office. Christ himself sits alone and he's now brought us to be partakers of that name. Say, I am a partaker of the name. Listen, you are not just a partaker of the, of, of the nature. You are also a partaker of the office. Seated with Christ, it is called. Number three. Number three. The last is called the power or the blood. The blood. Oh dear. I feel so sad, eh? I wish I had the time to pieces this thing for you. The blood. But let's see what we can do. We're ready for the communion now. We'll pray. Somebody is 10 or 15 minutes left to wave something that 100 years, 100 years, 50 years could not wait. I'm not entertaining you. Believe me. The accuser of the brethren finds a way To come before the holy judge You know the song? Points a finger at the faults And failings of the saints Won't you judge them now? But I have an advocate in heaven's courts My redeemer and the high priest of my soul Jesus Christ the Lamb The Holy Lamb of God Nathaniel Bassi's song Very, very powerful song Eternal saving blood I don't have to cry For you have paid the price Sit down Let me teach you something about blood Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11 For the life of the flesh is in the blood For the life of the flesh is in the blood what is in blood life say life what when you hold your atm what is in your atm you see that now there is something that is captured in your atm are we together now yes the blood of anything carries the life of that thing not just the blood of jesus the blood of a goat is where the life of a goat flows. The blood of a human is where his human life flows. There is a relationship between blood and life. Blood represents life. Write it down, please. Blood represents life. This is the first quick information I want you to know about blood. 
and this life is in levels this life that is in the blood is in levels now the second thing i want you to know about blood from scripture blood has always been used as a ransom write the word ransom very powerful word ransom r a n s o m You know what a ransom is? Look up. A ransom is the payment you make to release someone in captivity. When they kidnap someone, unfortunately like we have around our region, the terrorists or kidnappers, for whatever reason, they demand a ransom. That money, that purchasing power that you bring to give them, then they release the captive, is found in blood so blood is currency in the realm of the spirit the same way naira and cobo and dollars and pounds are in the physical realm naira is actually an instrument of settlement and purchase in the realm of the spirit that you can use blood like you use money to buy things is called redemption when you redeem a thing you buy it back number one when you redeem a thing to redeem means to compensate for a default the idea of redemption talks of compensation a system of compensation for a default to redeem also means to regain possession to regain possession so blood has the purchasing power Blood has the power of appeasal. It can bring to an end contentions. Why am I teaching you about the blood before we take the communion? Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2 is a very powerful and profound spiritual law. Please look up and read it as loud as you can. Ready? One to go. As the bird by wandering a swallow so a cause costless shall not stand do you know what this means that means anytime a cause anytime any kind of demonic thing comes if there is no legal basis it will not work so the fact that it works it means that there is a cause because a curse causeless shall not stand now hear me as powerful as the name of jesus is when it has to do with dealing with matters of legalities in the spirit listen very carefully it is true that the word of god is powerful it is true that the name is powerful but there is a legal system in the realm of the spirit i told you here that ransom means the payment to bring a pizza because of a default when man fell we willingly gave our authority we willingly gave our lives we willingly submitted ourselves to the influence of satan he became the god of this world even the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walks in the sons of disobedience now i have taught you in, in the, the, the previous series that many of these our precious forefathers and many of in ignorance many of them legitimately invited satan and through medium and priests and whatever it is they entered covenants seeking assistance from the realm of the spirit knowing that a body without a spirit is dead because they did not know the one true god satan masquerading as god came and deceived them and most of them willingly handed over i hope you know i taught you last week the blood in you now i hope you know that your blood is older than you except you don't believe biology because it was because of that blood that you came the blood was already there for you to have arrived is that true without that blood you would not be born 
by one man's sin and then through the means of reproduction by blood the sin nature continued to multiply and you know that the blood from a child medical doctors teach us that it comes from the man that was why God did not allow any man play the fatherly role of Jesus the Holy Ghost himself there was no problem having an earthly woman since the blood comes from man if a man participated in the birth of Jesus he would be born as sin immediately he would not even need any communion because he's already sin so he came as the sinless one are we together now that is the qualification that the kind of appeasal that the yokes and the causes and the covenants demand based on the legal system of heaven it will require blood that did not come from a human male and that is impossible based on the law of reproduction so the holy spirit came and played that fatherly role jesus came although with a human body but not blood from a mortal man understand this very carefully i'm building for you the case why the blood of jesus is so precious so that is god's blood is that true because <laughs> When Jesus Christ, listen carefully, I told you that blood has a measure of purchasing power. When Jesus Christ gave his blood, because his blood is a representation of his life, when he gave that life, he was sinless. That means he was not deserving of judgment. Are we together now? And watch the wisdom even though it was god that allowed jesus to die but jesus made sure that satan played a role in his dying why because somebody is about to be blamed and when satan was moving through men he was happy doing what he was doing to kill jesus of course satan would not kill him. you know what i mean to participate in the flesh in crucifying him when you kill an innocent man listen carefully when you kill an innocent man according to the law of scripture the blood of that man starts crying and when it cries God will hear and whatever the blood says to do it will be done Cain and Abel is that true Abel was dead but his blood cried now when Satan did all that he did the blood of Jesus started crying and instead of crying to say avenge me he says no as a reward for killing an innocent man release the one who is guilty you see now release the one who is guilty so every time satan stands before you and claims that it is true that your fathers worship idols and based on legal grounds you should not experience breakthrough you should experience barrenness you tell him you are right if i'm the only one who is going to fight this case but i have an advocate are we together now this is very powerful the blood of jesus is the legal system that breaks every hold every hold of covenants and ordinances that speak against the saints how does that happen by reminding satan that if it was just for the guiltless to become guilty then it is just for the guilty to become guiltless hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching